Good evening. I'm Councilmember Claire Kelly of the First Ward, and I'd now like to convene the, um, the City of Evanston Administration and Public Works Committee meeting of July 8th at 5.05 p.m. And let's see, Ms. would you like to take the roll? Uh, Um, Council Member Burns. I saw him earlier. Council Member Reed. Council, I put these in the wrong order. I'm sorry. Council Member Kelly. Present. Council Member Harris. Present. Council Member Nisma. Present. Mr. Great. So we have a quorum. Um, and we'll go ahead and begin with um, approval. Would somebody like to move approval of the minutes? I move for the approval of the June 24, 2024 Administration and Public Works Committee meeting minutes. I will, I will second with the understanding that there had been a correction made uh, to item A2. Uh, seeing Ms. Leipzinger indicate in, in the affirmative, then I, my second stands and we're ready to vote. All in favor? Okay, Aye. so approved. Um, we'll now move to public comment, and we'll begin with those who signed up who are here present today. And we'll start with um, public comment from James Johnson. Um, good evening, my name is James Johnson. Uh, resident of the fourth ward here in Evanston. Oh, no, Hold on, sir. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Testing one, two. Okay. okay. My name is James Johnson, resident of the fourth ward here in Evanston, and I'd just like to start off by saying that, like other types of presidents, heroism has deep roots in the very structure of society. In short, it's just not a trendy topic or a recent issue. In many places, society has long considered all manner of physical disabilities, behavior, developmental, and sensory, including those with mental health concerns, signs of inferiority, and relegated those with so-called flaws to a lower society status. And I ask of the mayor, along with the city council, to see beyond ramps to people with disabilities. I am not asking of this concept of disability friendly, being born out of pity, tragedy, terrible as a thing to do, but rather people with disabilities are equal and should stop leaving us at the outskirts or as a second thought and bring us into the fold where we rightfully belong. Although disability laws such as the ADA are very necessary, I always thought of it as a backup for those things are not working for people with disabilities in society or even as a how-to manual with the will if it's there. But the knowledge might not, might not be. I have always believed that inclusion as well as a sense of belonging don't start with the law but the attitude of, of people in our society. In other words, you can't enforce basic laws that make society usable to people with disabilities, but that doesn't make us feel wanted. That is just forcing people to obey the law, which of course they should. Belonging is the extra step of doing what is not governed by law to make people welcome and comfortable. The city of Evanston should be putting forth energy as well as financial investment to welcome and include people with disabilities who feel welcome and a part of society within Evanston in hope that other cities will follow. Until the city of Evanston implements this philosophy in making decisions concerning Evanston residents, only then will Evanston actually be diverse. And expounding regarding to the, the beach, I would just well, I'd like to state that the first, you had two designs in the beginning a year ago, and you chose the one that's being denied now as a lower expense. And now there's another phase coming in as being a lower expense. 
to which some, I'm not even sure on that because I met with a few individuals at the Dog Beach to discuss the third proposal of a 88 Dog Beach, which makes sense in some ways. In some ways it doesn't make sense because they want to use a residential ramp instead of a commercial ramp that you see in people's houses, which I don't know how well that would be. But I'm not a, 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 an engineer in that, in that way, and no one was available to discuss that with me that's in engineering. Because of being metal, I'm concerned of it being overheated for the dog paws, a pads of the paws of my dog and other dogs, because dogs will be dogs, they'll see a ramp, they'll have to follow, and that heat will be 100 degrees higher than what it normally is, and it will burn the, the paw in a matter of seconds. So I'm concerned on that issue as well. And I just hope that maybe we could come to an agreement sometime soon to where we could get together and have the ADA dog reach. And you like to save money, which is fine, and hopefully you could utilize that extra funding towards other improvements along the lakefront that definitely requires ADA accessibility. Because I go up on there every day as long as the weather is permitted, and I go all over to the city. And I understand the situation, how everybody that's disabled, how they have to communicate traveling through those those streets and sidewalks and I'm just going in with that thank you thank you very much um, our next speaker is Matt Dinnerstein yep. hi I'm Matt Dinnerstein a fifth ward resident and I'm uh, here to uh, bring some awareness and concern regarding uh, the dog beach. Uh, I'm thankful first that we do have a dog beach compared to a number of years ago when it was a little bit bigger than a postage stamp. But uh, um, I, I want, uh, I am uh, I'm visually impaired and, uh, and until, well last year I wasn't able to get in at all. I, as I couldn't read the numbers to punch in the code to actually get into the beach, and I'm thankful often that there's a guard there who will let me in, um, and other people who see me there all the time will let me in, but if I just show up when nobody's there, one, I can't get into the beach at all, and I could wait, and if nobody shows up, I'm not getting in there because I, I'm unable to punch the numbers. One thought on that was having on our dog pass, on our on our dog beach pass, which I usually wear on, on my sun hat, um, is having a barcode similar to the one that's at Levy Center for the gym at Levy Center, so that the dog beach pass has a barcode. You wave it under um, a reader, and that gives you access to the beach. Um, that's that's one concern I have for myself and others. Also, the height should be such that somebody, I'm not sure about this, such that somebody who is sitting in a wheelchair has access to it. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is that we really need to think about, in the construction of this, is not to cheap out. Um, rather than have something that's up and quickly done, um, something that will last and that we won't have to do again in five years. I mean, I look at like uh, uh, Penny Park, and that was great when it was built, but now it's like Splinter Park. And uh, we just need to take into consideration that this needs to be able to stand up to the weather of all the seasons, it's there all the time, and uh, that we don't shortchange ourselves by, uh, by saying, oh, this is 10%, 15% less than the next one above that, which could be of better quality. I haven't seen, I haven't, I'm not aware of the plans of the beach, but that's one thing I wanted to bring up. I also wanted to bring up, which I don't think are in the plans, but wanted to uh, let people know about having uh, an area that is both accessible to uh, uh, wheelchairs and that a viewing area that you don't necessarily have to go down to the beach itself but can sit up 
higher if you have a wheelchair and don't want to go to the water's edge or something like that you'll be able to still um, sit and watch the dogs romp thank you thank you very much our next speaker is um, John Kennedy so, um, so at the end of this, I'll ask for your presentation. When, but uh, next speaker, Priscilla um, Johnson. My name is. Can you hear me? My name is Priscilla Thomas. I'm 89 years old, and I live at the Mather. And I have a 14-year-old dog, and we go down to the beach every morning, sometimes in the afternoon. It's my favorite place town. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. I can go what's there now I can do, but eventually I will not be able to. So I'm very much in favor of the ADA thing, whatever will go. However, the $800,000 one, I think not only is over the top, but it's such a long way. It's a very long and windy way. And a concern I have is the width. I mean, I take up a lot of room. I'm like this and I have a dog over here and I meet somebody coming the other way and they have a dog, sometimes two dogs, and the dogs are gonna stop and sniff each other as dogs do, or they might get in a tussle. And then there's nowhere to go. If there uh, if they're railings there, you're pushed up against it. If there are no railings, you're pushed off. And I just, um, I just don't think it's gonna work, and I don't think it's the best solution for seniors like myself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our our next speaker is Mark Beersdorf. Hi, I'm Mark Beersdorf. I've lived in Evanston for the last five and a half years, and I'm a one-year dog owner. Uh, Romeo couldn't come tonight. Uh, I've been involved in IT and security projects for the last 34 years. I'm a cybersecurity architect, and I walk into rooms listening to $100,000 to $300 million projects and trying to help people get them right. And so I want to start by saying I love the idea of making both the beach and the dog beach accessible to every resident in uh, Evanston. Have no issues with that. But just like many of the projects I listen to, the needs and problems that are being solved don't match the solution that's been put in front of it. And I'll just pick a couple of figures 60 inches, according to my reading of the ADA, is the minimum. It's not the optimum. If you want to make a path, it's got to be 10 feet to 12 feet wide so two people can walk side by side with their dogs and pass each other. It's not very well designed. The second point I'll raise is there is no need for it to go through the protected areas. Let's not turn uh, an ADA issue into an ADA versus the environment issue is a very poor design from the get-go for that reason alone as well. I would suggest that in, in very complex uh, technical uh, issues that I work on, we usually start with something called a POC or proof of concept. There's no reason you can't build without changing a single thing on the dog beach, a simple ramp down, and let it live there for a couple years and see how it's uh, uh, used, who uses it, even numbers. And the same thing with the beach. There's no reason why you can't make a really decent area for people under, uh, who have mobility issues to come down to the beach. There's none. But putting an $800,000 project, and I have no problems with money, guys. I've been on $300 million projects. But putting that much money into something that doesn't work because it's not wide enough. It goes through protected areas. And you could put a POC in and start to see what the numbers are. And I'm not positive this last um, uh, statement, so I, I'm happy to be wrong about it. But I question the metrics. Has, I, I have seen three people with dogs in wheelchairs in Evanston. I'm sure there's more. I have seen people on walkers with dogs in Evanston. Has anybody sat down and met with them and asked what their needs are? Are we building a solution without having first gone back and asked what their requirements are, their needs are, and their wishes are? And if the answer is we haven't, I would humbly suggest, that as I did research to come up here, I looked up case studies and I came across the Chicago Park District case study, which is actually kind of interesting. 
They have many, many, many more parks than we do, obviously. And what they did was, in addition to the 591 parks, 234 field houses, et cetera, et cetera, 77 pools, 64 nature areas, you can't build uh, American Disabilities Act comparable access to all the beaches. So you pick the ones you want to do, right? You don't have an unlimited source of money or an unlimited amount of time. But in doing the research, one of the things they did was they went to the universities and hired interns. And they saved over a million dollars from um, consultants using these folks. Now we are gifted with being between Loyola and Northwestern. I guarantee you we can find people who could help with this problem and this analysis. So I wanted to thank you for the time. Wish you the best of luck in figuring this out. Let's keep our dog beach in a good shape and let's make sure we meet the needs of our um, ADA um, residents. Be well. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mark, Mark Carlin. Mark Carlin, I'm a resident of the uh, Ninth Ward and uh, I'm here to support uh, Point A3, approval of the contract award with John Keno and company for the Evanston Dog Beach, Beach Access Project. Um, Alderman Woman Kelly asked me to come out and visit the Dog Beach last year. I know this can be a contentious issue. It's not an easy problem to solve. Um, and that came out uh, when I viewed the Dog Beach and the options at the request of Alderman Woman Kelly. However, um, I, in my past, I was executive vice president of Schwab Rehabilitation Hospital and was very involved with ADA issues, working with Access Living. And um, I am also was appointed by Mayor Biss to the Commission on Aging and Disability and uh, am in very, I'm very active in the ADA subcommittee. I think that it's um, time that Evanston needs to move forward it's uh, been very sluggish in getting the city to be ADA adaptable. Um, while I understand that there could be quibbling about this project, I do think that it will go a long way toward putting Evanston in compliance with the ADA for beaches like Dog Beach and for other projects in the city. It's not going to be cheap to become ADA compliant. Uh, we should just get that on the table, particularly when you're retrofitting, whether it's a building or a dog beach, there's going to be expenses involved. And so I once again want to say that I'm fully in support of the approval of this contract. I do understand uh, those who oppose it. And I've listened to just the speakers who have come up um, before me, and you know they have concerns, and they do need to be considered. But in the end, I think this is an appropriate solution to a problem that, for persons with disabilities, is uh, uh, necessary to overcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Jeff Barini. Good evening, Jeff Barini, Second Ward. Thank you. Uh, Thirty-year resident, thirty-plus year resident of Evanston. Also the father of uh, Ted Graham Barini, wheelchair user. Um, so as I've, I've written before, he's not a very beachy guy, but we know a lot about ramps and, and access here in Evanston. Uh, and I would like to urge you to. Um, follow the recommendation of the Preservation Commission, which said to consider a third option in the design of the access to, to, the, to the beach. You're um, hearing a number of concerns from people, you've seen it, about the length of the, of the, of the uh, boardwalk down to the beach, the width of that boardwalk. Um, you'll hear about uh, the counter proposals to have more direct access from where the current entrance is right now down to the beach. Um, and and some some cost estimates of, of, of some of those things, um, but but 
you know, I, I want to go back, you know, Council Member Newsma, to you at the last council meeting. You expressed your, your displeasure that this is still dragging on and, and with people, you know, with all kinds of projects bringing up objections at the last minute and that kind of thing. But I, I think what you're hearing has been alluded to by a couple of, of speakers is that the reason you're, this is popping up at the last minute is because those people were not considered from minute one. And so what I think would be really beneficial is for the city to gather um, the people from the Smith group again, um, the, whoever gave input to the first two plans, you know, what, what showed up were, was option A and option B before I know of anybody gathering any input. Gather those people, but add more constituents. Add Mr., you know, Mike Myers from the Dog Beach group, um, John Kennedy, who you'll hear from tonight, other members of, of the disability community, and kind of redo that design brief quickly to get a better fix on what actually needs to be done at the beach. And then let that same team, excuse me, same team go back and come back with another option. It's not going to be a $30,000 solution, I know that, because as some of you have expressed, this is the lakefront, it's a historic lakefront, it needs to reflect the pride and the history that we all have in Evanston, it needs to uh, be permanent, it needs to also reflect the commitment we have to, to the members of the community with disabilities. So uh, that all needs to be considered, but that calls for a third design, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, John Kennedy, would you like to come up? And I know you have a few slides for us. I'm sorry. We um, have people online to comment first, and then I didn't realize that. I apologize. Okay, online. Our uh, first. Amanda Zim. Amanda? Okay, not online. Oh, she is here? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, let me see. Okay. I'm trying to get my video. Oh, it says I cannot start my video because the host has stopped it. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. You're I can on. just do audio of that is fine with you guys. I'm sorry, did you say yes? Yes, do audio. Yes, thank you, Amanda, that's fine. I'm sorry we can't get the video on. That's okay. Um, my name is Amanda Zeem. I am a member of the city's Preservation Commission and of course a resident of Evanston. Um, I am here today because I just want to just, just give a little briefing, a little talk a little bit about the preservation meeting. Let me see, hold on, start the meeting, one second see if this works okay is that working on your side yes okay wonderful um, last week's preservation meeting reviewed this project um, in a special session the preservation commission unanimously um, recommended not to move forward with this project and to instead consider a third option um, this is very rare. Usually it's very hard to get consensus among a group of people um, on our commission or any, any other uh, commission. So I just wanna point out that, that it's a very strong recommendation from the commission. I also wanna just mention that while this is not a binding recommendation because the city already received um, a COA or a certificate of appropriateness by administrative review, I do think it makes sense for the city to take the preservation's recommendation. And the reason I say that is I do think it's problematic that the city granted itself approval for, you know, for a city project without the input of the commission or without the public transparency of a commission meeting. Um, for that reason, I think the, there, there's a conflict of interest here with having it done in that way and that that can be easily remedied if the um, committee tonight votes no for this project and does reconsider other options. So that's the first thing. Also just wanna note some of the issues um, we discussed. One of the issues was that we felt it wasn't sensitive to the natural environment and including the um, nearby bird sanctuary and the views and it would not, and it would in fact change the character of the Lakeshore Historic District. One of our standards states that every reasonable effort to adapt a site 
um, that requ should require minimal alteration. I don't think this meets the standard. I don't think this is a minimal alteration. I do fully support having ADA accessibility, but I think there's a, a better way to do that. In addition, I think based on some of the feedback from the disabled community members that this doesn't fully meet their needs or address their needs, including um, this design having a longer and more difficult circuitous route to access the dog beach. Um, in addition, I think the, the placement of the entrance closer to the Clark Street Beach public entrance is also gonna, going to possibly have more congestion at one like bottleneck point where there'll be more dogs, more people. This could potentially be unwieldy for wheelchair users or people with other devices. It could also pose a problem for those that have, you know, dog allergies or dog phobias to all be kind of in the same place. I think it makes sense to have those entrances be discreet and kind of more where they are today. And then lastly, I just want to mention as a taxpayer, I think this is, you know, an $800,000 job with the design work. It'll probably creep up to a million given all the construction costs in the current environment. I think you could develop maybe even in-house or the mention of somebody else, you know, at, you know, utilize the resources of the universities, an elegant solution. And you could reimagine this space with, you know, some of the concerns in mind from our community members and also the concerns of the Evanston Pres Preservation Commission. That's all. Thank you very much. Our next speaker online is um, Brian Bacharis. Hello, thank you. In fact, and thank thank everybody for their thoughtful comments and the members of this committee for their hard work. Um, I'm Brian Bacharis. I'm a, a lifetime 69 year resident of Evanston, currently residing in the ninth ward. And, and I, I believe that this is a very commendable effort of accommodation for those who require it. And I also believe that this access problem needs a better solution. And just as uh, Amanda mentioned moments ago, uh, the Preservation Council recommended uh, earlier in this process that there is a better solution and it might take a little more time to, to arrive at that. Um, why does this body you know, wish to burden handicapped visitors to our dog beach with a 400 foot expansive and expensive Ipe wood path, which uh, requires parking far away from the, the destination and traversing eight to 10 times more ground to get there uh, to the dog beach uh, than what might exist uh, locally as a uh, an alternative structure. Um, just imagine what the prospect of that looks like and feels like for somebody using a walker or a wheelchair as also obviously articulated by some of our speakers. Um, as proposed, I believe, I personally believe this is ridiculously expensive and does not provide a better solution than a 50 foot ADA compliant modular structure costing 15 times less and competent, arriving at the same uh, conclusion of delivering to the needs of those who need accommodation. Um, you know, parking could be immediately available above ground there near near the near the parking area for boating that might be a little, need a little bit of rearranging of that particular parking area, but it, it is doable. Thank you. you. Know, I truly believe we're trying to do what's right Let's also do what's best for all the stakeholders and all and all of the community. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carl Klein. Good evening. Um, as Secretary of the City of Evanston Preservation Commission, I would like to read a letter from the Preservation Commission that we sent on July 3rd into the public record. On Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024, the Preservation Commission convened a special meeting for further comment and study of the referred city-initiated Evanston Dog Beach Access Project. The Commission's consultation powers and duties allow for broad review and comment of city-initiated projects or activities which may affect historic resources. Pursuant to City of Evanston Code Section 283G24, requiring the city to seek review and comment from the commission for any city initiated projects or activities that may affect historic resources or historic resources deemed eligible for designation by the commission 
we have reviewed the scope of work for the Evanston Dog Beach Access Project located within the Lakeshore Historic District. Please take into consideration the following comments and recommendations. Commissioners wondered if the right questions were asked of the designers to properly identify the problem and study corresponding solutions that incorporate the priorities of all stakeholders, including seniors, wheelchair users, handicapped stall parkers, dogs, passers-by, preservationists, and bird and plant habitat supporters. The scope of the work does not adequately minimize impact to the site's character and avoidance of adverse impacts to the historic and environmental setting could be achieved by restricting construction to the area south of the breakwater on the existing dog beach without impact to the existing natural area. Consider exploring a scaled down or temporary design due to the extensive public testimony of what works and does not work for dogs accessibility, budget and habitat. Seek a more efficient use of money to solve the accessibility problem without added scope in the natural area. Priorities should include a double gate entry, security card access, dog wash, multiple benches along the stretch of beach if the rocks will remain blocked by fencing, lighting at the gate, and of course, smooth, safe wheelchair access along as much of the deep dog beach as possible. Moving forward, the city needs to act diligently to follow the mandated process for commission review of city initiated projects or activities that may affect historic resources. The city should follow best practices to engage with the commission as technical expert and consult with and solicit input from the commission early in the design phase of projects where the commissioners comments can guide design approach while suggested changes remain feasible and practical. Respectfully submitted 2024 City of Evanston Historic Preservation Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Klein. Um, next we have Mary Rosinski. Mary Rosinski. Oh, oh okay. Good evening, thank you, and thank you for your job here. Um, I sent the city council members all a copy of this, and these are the actual pictures, and I think there is a little bit of confusion here tonight is, do we want ADA ramp or not? And that's not what the issue is as far as I see it. It's like, yes, we need ADA ramp. We have a 2012 transition plan and we have a 2022 uh, transition plan for ADA. And we should be really trying to get there at all our facilities. The issue at hand right now, as I see it, is that there's wrong information on the table and the consultants are working with wrong information. So in order to do a ramp, we know that you have to go like a certain amount of feet per inches per foot you need to go down. And the consultants were working on six feet. And I know there was a surveyor hired and he was out there on Saturday and the height from the gate of the dog beach to get to the level that you need to do is only three and a half feet, not six and a half feet, which means you don't need a 70 or 80 foot or 200 foot, 260 foot meandering thing. You can do it in 42 feet, which brings up another question. If you can do it, the, the best thing with, because I know my, when my mom was 90 and my dad was 94 and all that, is to get people where they need to go with their dogs as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. So if we can have people walking less, getting less tired, or if someone has COPD or they just had knee surgery, we can have them down at the beach in a very safe way. Now the question of whether you do modular or whether or not you do concrete, I want to remind everybody that down at the, just south of the dog beach is the boat launch. And that's concrete. Now I have no idea, but why can't we do something like that? And test it just right now with a, with a modular one and a commercial one, not a residential one, and get the estimate. But what I think I'm most concerned about is that there isn't those options on the table. And we have a fiduciary responsibility to our, our residents to give them the best product for the money. And don't be cheap. I agree with you. This is too important. But don't spend money when you don't have correct information. So I think you owe, we owe it to ourselves to send it back and have people have the right information. So you do have all the actual pictures, measurements, survey, and all that with you. Please look at it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And next we have um, Jane Hampton online. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, I am um, coming to this meeting because I became a disabled person four years ago during COVID, and I came from needing a wheelchair and someone assisting me all the time because at that point it was paralyzed to now being able to walk uh, with walkers for different amounts of time depending on what I'm doing and on how strong I feel that day. Um, coming to something like the dog beach would totally depend for me on how long or how hard it was to get there. So aside from all what I think were very valid points people brought up about the width of the ramp, the durability of the ramp, being able to use it in the winter if one wanted to go there in the winter, um, all of those things, I think the number one thing for probably most disabled persons who don't have someone pushing them or don't have a motorized vehicle is getting to the destination as quickly as possible, obviously safely, safely as possible. If I were to choose what dog beach to go to, my number one decision would be how can I get there with the least expenditure of energy so that I can use my resources when I get to the dog beach. So I know everybody has made a lot of really great comments and some of this is overlapping, but I just wanna really uh, reinforce what I've learned in the four years since this happened to me that I need to get where I'm going so that I can, in, in the least uh, expenditure of energy as possible, so that I can use my energy when I get there. And so the current drawings that I've seen online of this long meandering ramp just seem to me not considerate of those people who are trying to be ambulatory under their own steam and have a limit to how far they can go. So that was the number one thing that I wanted to mention, and I will pass this on to the next speaker. Thank you very much. And now um, I'll call to the mic uh, John Kennedy, who's speaking on behalf of a group um, of folks who've been working on exploring access, ADA access at the dog beach and has some slides. So yes, the slides. Um, let's see Hello, I'm see. John Kennedy. I'm third ward. Um, so let's see, Anderson, who's, who's, he said they were loaded up for him. All right, so I'm basically speaking on behalf of the working committee of the ADA access group of Friends of the Dog Beach. And I'm gonna, next slide. Next slide. Oh. All right, we basically sat back and said, what are the objectives? First off, provide ADA access to the dog beach, clearly. Minimize the impact on the surrounding environment. Provide ample space for mobility challenged users to enjoy the dog beach activities. Provide this access as quickly as possible and at reduced cost. The goal is not really to help people get to the beach. It's not about the ramp. The goal is to get people to the beach. Next, uh, let's see. So, possible alternative route. If you actually go to the existing ramp, as you can see there on the, on the right-hand side, um, that existing ramp, between that ramp and the uh, steel breakwater is six feet. And you, and you can run a ramp down there. By the way, it's a commercially viable ramp, not something for residential. But you can use that space to run a ramp down it, uh, you build a concrete pad at the very top. Um, it's a com you know ADA compliant. Could be 36 feet or 30, 36 feet long. Maybe it's 42 feet with the new survey. And you know it could be three feet across, which is the reg, or it could be wider. So at the end, and this is again where the goal is. You got a 10 by 25 foot beach mat for users to observe the activities. That's what they're going there for. And you know the, the 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 nice thing about this approach is that you can provide handicap parking right next to the entrance. In the future, this ramp could be wood or concrete if we decide that this is workable, and we can provide a means for shade um, for the people sitting there. 
on a side view of this design, and again, I'm, I'm not an architect or a surveyor, but as you can see on the, on the far left-hand side, there's the existing gate, there's the existing ramp going down. And you, so you build a, a small concrete platform, you, you, you could either have the concrete continue on down, or you can get a commercially viable uh, ADA ramp. You have to have a stop in between for rest, and the second ADA ramp. Basically, you're looking at 45 to 48 feet of ramp. And then you get to the sand mats. Okay. These are examples of aluminum and wood construction on beaches. The, the top left is actually the aluminum ramp that goes from the shore to the, um, to the pier at our own beach ramp. So every winter, staff takes that aluminum ramp off because of, of uh, construction, but, or because of the um, possible in, you know, um, uh, ice and other things. So, you know, basically we already have a similar aluminum ramp for ADA compliance. The one on the right is at Ocean City, New Jersey. That's aluminum. You can also have wood, uh, ADA ramp at Destin Beach, Florida, and another one at Ocean City, New Jersey as well. Now this is the interesting thing. If you actually look at the distance of the current map, or of the current plan the city proposed, it's around 450 feet from where the, the handicap parking is. So I took the start of the, of the red line at the very bottom right, left, right hand, left hand corner. From there, it's about 170, 180 feet to the entrance. Then you go through this route, and then you got another 60, 70 feet worth of sidewalk before you get to a, a mat where you can actually observe. On the right-hand side is the alternative design, which is utilizing the 45-foot ramp. And again, if you if you take the you know if we put some handicap parking right inside that gate, it makes it very easy for people in wheelchairs coming off of a of a car to get down there. And again, that's only a hundred feet. So what are the advantages? It allows mobility challenge users to shorter access to the dog beach. There's no physical impact on the, on the dunes just north of the beach. There's, it's cost effective. You know, we've got a quote for 25,000 bucks for the commercial ramp. Let's throw some design in there and maybe some stability issues. You could have this thing up for probably $50,000 this year. Ample parking available right next to um, uh, the entrance, and the route is um, could be upscaled to wood or concrete. Again, a gentleman earlier was talking about you know proof of concept. Think of this aluminum ramp made right here in Kenosha as a proof of concept. Any questions on this design? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And I know um, Mike Myers of the Dog Beach really wanted to be here this evening to comment. Um, he's worked very hard on this and cares deeply about ensuring that we get ADA access up as soon. Um, he, his sister, um, he had to leave on a family emergency. His sister, he said, has been you know, in a wheelchair long before um, ADA passed. And he just says, please respect the spirit of ADA. Um, it's our duty to um, develop a ramp that is the shortest, the easiest, the most direct. He asked for us to respect that, respect more respect and dignity towards the um, disabled community to, to, to really ensure that we are following that spirit of the ADA law. Um, so I think with that, is that our last? Yes. Okay, so on that, that ends public comment. Um, so with that, I know we're already quite behind. So uh, let's see. Um, we have a consent agenda. We're good. Sorry. Yeah, so um, I mean, I would, I would pull items from the consent agenda this evening, but I um, would be amenable to pulling those at pulling City Council. At well, I'd like to pull, yes. I think it's worth having 
I mean, if the committee thinks having the dog beach discussion at council is a better use of our time, I think that's but well I, advised, but, but I'm I, happy to have it here. What I would suggest then is uh, moving both items A3, which is the dog beach, and item A12, the grant, uh, we vote to move those forward to council with a neutral recommendation that gets them out of committee and sets up uh, one conversation uh, on each of those items. A3, A3, A3 and I'm sorry, what was the other one? Uh, A3 and A12. Second. Yes, that's a motion. I will move item uh, A3 and A12 to be advanced to council, each with a neutral recommendation from the NPW. Second. Okay. Okay, um, with that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we gotta do a roll call since Council Member Okay, Reed's Council Member Reed, uh, we're gonna have to do a roll call. I hope, uh, does that sound okay to you? It's up to you all, but we could do a voice roll. But it's up to you as well. Okay, Council Member Burns. Yeah, we decided the grant for connections. Abstain. You should abstain. Devon wanted to talk about it. I can go either way. I'm happy to have it move forward to council. I have a lot, a lot of questions, a lot of thoughts. That's what I was back there doing, talking to staff about it. So my concern is that a council will have a, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. But I'm concerned we're going to have a very limited conversation at council um, and we'll be on a tighter mm -hmm. time limit. That's my concern also. This is um, merits. Um, so I am concerned also. Um, I just want to ensure that we do really give this the attention it deserves um, so that we move forward with an appropriate plan. You I'm fine. You would, you would call the vote, so let's continue with the vote and then proceed. I agree. Council Member Burns? Uh, aye. Council Member Reed? Aye. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Harris? Aye. Council Member Nuzma? Aye. Okay. So those will move forward with a neutral recommendation to be discussed at council. So I invite everybody who had comments to bring those to council. Um, and then and next then, we move. Yeah, so Madam Chair, I'll move the rest of the consent agenda, which does not include items A3 and A12. Okay. Second. Okay, the rest of the consent agenda has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. so I believe um, that will conclude then our agenda. So um, City Council will convene at 6 o'clock? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, the meeting is adjourned at 5.53 p.m. <laughs>